everyone. Welcome to our next episode of the UT McGovern Neurology Nuggets. My name is Tapasya Surti and I'm one of the PGY3 Neurology residents here. And here we have with us is Dr. Lincoln. He's an MD, PhD neuroimmunologist with focus on MS and MRI imaging. And he um, is the director of the MRI Analysis Center here and is conducting a multitude of neuroimaging projects. He will be talking to us today about neuroimaging findings and multiple sclerosis. Um, so, Dr. Lincoln, could you tell us a little bit about multiple sclerosis? Sure. So, uh, multiple sclerosis uh, is a neuroimmune disease. Uh, most individuals think it's an autoimmune disease. Um, it is a disorder where there are uh, abnormal lymphocytes, uh, T and B lymphocytes, that uh, transverse from the, uh, from the blood into the parenchyma of the brain uh, and spinal cord and cause damage to the tissue itself. And uh, to diagnose the uh, MS, we use the McDonald's criteria. So part of the McDonald's criteria is dissemination in space. And Dr. Lincoln, could you tell us about the particular neuroimaging findings we look at for the McDonald's criteria? Um, uh, yeah. Sure. So more and more, we've uh, uh, you know kind of relied on on imaging to make the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. So the criteria have evolved quite a bit from Poser to to McDonald. Um, the more recent, most recent criteria that we have, the 2017, at least that's published, um, has uh, 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 kind of classic looking lesions which are kind of ovoid in nature, have very discrete borders or oriented in a certain way. And those classic lesions have to be located in uh, at least two out of four locations, which as you know, uh, uh, the locations are typically uh, adjacent to the ventricles, so periventricular. Uh, in the cortex itself or adjacent to the cortex, so that's intracortical or juxtacortical, um, in the uh, infratentorial area, so that's brainstem and, and cerebellum, or spinal cord. So it has to be in two out of those four locations. Yes, and then we have the upcoming McDonald's criteria that will uh, be published next year. And would you mind telling us uh, what the additional neuroimaging finding that will be included? Sure. So I, I think the upcoming criteria, you know, the, the entire purpose of all of these criteria have been to make early and earlier diagnosis of disease because what we found kind of consistently with our studies is that the earlier we intervene, um, the better it is for the patient overall. And, and by contrast, the later we intervene, the worse outcome it is for the patient, uh, both short term as well as long term. So the newer criteria do exactly that. They, they try and speed up the diagnosis even more. Um, the biggest differences between the 2017 criteria and the 2024, which again won't be published until 20, 2025, uh, but that criteria is uh, the addition of a couple of imaging markers to enhance specificity of the diagnosis. Um, and then to uh, the, also the addition of a couple of other locations for sensitivity of the diagnosis. So the, the imaging markers that were uh, added for specificity were the central vein sign and the paramagnetic rim lesion. Um, and the, uh, the additions for sensitivity were adding the optic nerve uh, as another of those dissemination in space uh, area. So instead of four areas that we were talking about before, now there's a fifth area and that's the optic nerve itself. They've also added a couple of other paraclinical tests um, to kind of help to speed up the process of, of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And so in the 2017 criteria, the presence of uh, uh, spinal fluid abnormalities, specifically oligoclonal bands, uh, actually satisfied, uh, uh, served as a surrogate for dissemination in time. Mm -hmm. So now they've added what's known as kappa-free light chain, mm -hmm. which is uh, a little bit easier to do than lincoln bands. I think there, there was a little bit more uh, of, a, of an issue of, of sensitivity to various mm -hmm. uh, uh, sites. So the kappa-free light chains are a little bit easier to do. And that now serves as a surrogate for dissemination in time. So either the presence of kappa-free light chains or uh, oligoclonal bands now serves as, as DIT, dissemination in time. And then they've made a few additional changes with regard to uh, for patients that have typical symptoms mm -hmm. but only have lesions in one out of those five locations. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we see patients where they have very classic appearing mm -hmm. symptoms. You get an MRI and all of the lesions are next to the ventricles, mm -hmm. so periventricular, but none of them are elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, with the old criteria, we couldn't make that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. We had to wait for another clinical event, that dissemination in time component, uh, in order to, to you know, say that, that, that that was the diagnosis. So now what they've done is to say that if you have lesions in, in only one of those uh, uh, areas, um, but that you have um, at least um, um, four of those lesions that, that it's sufficient to make the diagnosis without the need for the dissemination and time component. Um, and then for patients with progressive disease, they said if you have two spinal cord lesions, that works as well mm -hmm. uh, for the dissemination in space. Because mm -hmm. we would say, well, if they had two or three, it didn't matter. It was still only one area that was involved. Mm -hmm. um, now they've changed that a little bit. And then lastly, for pediatric onset multiple sclerosis, they made some recommendations as well for individual, for kids that present greater than 12 years old, that we should really be more cognizant of the fact that this may actually be a chronic disease, not MS necessarily, but a MOG associated demyelination. So they've recommended adding uh, MOG testing with mm -hmm. the cell based assay for that. Okay. And uh, could you tell us a bit more about uh, central vein sign and paramagnetic rim lesions and how that will be incorporated into assisting with the diagnosis of MS? Sure. So, I mean, so these are, are, are the, the two imaging findings that, that we were talking about uh, increase the specificity of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of, of uh, kind of atypical or uncertain cases where these are strongly required or, or recommended to make the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, these additional findings, the central vein sign and, and or the paramagnetic rim lesion, are not required to make the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so they're a good way to say, yes, this is the disease that we're dealing with. We're not mm -hmm. dealing with something different. Uh, but again, they're not necessarily required. So they improve the specificity, but, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily address the sensitivity. So the central vein sign um, is, is really something that has been described going all the way back to Charcot. Right, so when you look at the pathology of a lesion itself, mm -hmm. uh, you see that it's a perivenular process, mm -hmm. that the inflammation occurs or, uh, adjacent to a ventricle, or, or to a vein, pardon me. Um, and so uh, this is now something that we can see on imaging. So using specialized imaging, either uh, susceptibility-weighted imaging or preferentially uh, a gradient echo T2, uh, which accentuates the, uh, the paramagnetic component of iron that's present um, uh, you can actually see the vein uh, that kind of runs in the center of a lesion. And so the presence of this really tiny vein, which is usually less than two millimeters in diameter, this really tiny vein uh, kind of in the center, almost like the center of a leaf, uh, really does improve the specificity of diagnosis quite a bit. So what the committee um, recommended is that the presence of six or more of these central veins within the, the lesions. and, and the majority of these are seen in periventricular and deep white matter lesions. They're really not well observed in, in juxtacortical or intracortical lesions. Uh, and and it, it's hard to see even in, in infratentorial lesions. But six or more of these, uh, of these central vein uh, occurring lesions is, it actually increases the, um, the, the specificity of making the diagnosis of, of disease. And, and specifically, if you have a person that has kind of uh, typical symptoms and kind of classic dissemination in space and has six or more of these, you can make the diagnosis of disease because the specificity is that good. You can make the diagnosis of disease without needing that dissemination in time component. So either the CSF or an additional gadolinium enhancing lesion. Same thing for individuals that have kind of typical clinical presentation but only have periventricular lesions, let's say. Um, and so don't have you know, lesions in other areas uh, of the central nervous system if they have six or more of these and they have the dissemination in time, in time component, you can make the diagnosis uh, of disease itself. And then lastly, from the standpoint of pediatric onset MS, so we touched base on that uh, in just a little bit, um, if you have at least 50% of those T2 lesions having mm -hmm. central vein, that increases the specificity that you're dealing with multiple sclerosis and not some other disease. From the standpoint of paramagnetic rim lesions, mm -hmm. so this too is an iron uh, 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 type of process. There though, it's, we're not necessarily looking at iron in the blood vessel, mm -hmm. we're looking at iron in the tissue. Mm -hmm. um, so microglial cells are, are a type of immune cell, a uh, type of innate immune cell that we now know plays a very important role mm 
in uh, expansion of lesions, mm -hmm. what we now call slowly expanding lesions or cells, mm -hmm. and uh, in disability worsening as well. Mm -hmm. So they've been correlated really well to accumulation of disability. These uh, iron uh, uh, or these microglial cells, when they're gobbling up mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, the, the debris that's actually there, they gobble up hemosiderin as well. So they have uh, a lot of hemosiderin that's deposited within them. Mm -hmm. That hemosiderin deposit can be visualized on imaging mm -hmm. using a specialized type of imaging called susceptibility weighted imaging, which, mm -hmm. which uh, a lot of people are familiar with. They can actually be quantified also using a multi-echo susceptibility weighted image um, called a quantitative susceptibility mapping image. Mm -hmm. So what the McDonald uh, uh, Committee did was to say um, if there is the presence of at least one or more than one, mm -hmm. so at the, at the very least one of these uh, uh, iron-rich rims, which are called paramagnetic rim lesions or pearls, mm -hmm. so if the presence of one or more of these pearls is sufficient to increase the specificity of making the diagnosis. In the same way uh, with central vein, it actually can increase the sensitivity as well. So if you have um, uh, uh, an individual that has kind of typical clinical symptoms, um, but only has lesions in one of those areas, and we talked about periventricular uh, being you know, one, that one area, but no other area of the brain, if at least one of those lesions has pearl, then if you add the dissemination and time component, and mm -hmm. so that's the CSF or a gadolinium enhancing lesion, then now that is sufficient uh, to make the diagnosis uh, of, of multiple sclerosis. Um, and so that basically um, uh, is how pearls have been included in the, in the new diagnostic criteria as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Lincoln. Um, it was great to hear about uh, the upcoming changes in the McDonald's criteria compared to the current one that we use today and more about how central vein sign and PRLs will be used um, to assist with the uh, diagnosis and increase the specificity of the diagnosis of MS, um, especially in patients who have atypical presentations, known vascular risk factors, and, um, and patients who are an, at an elderly age greater than 50 years old. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome, thanks. Yeah.